everyone. Welcome today to today's training to webinar. My name is Chrissy. I'm a customer success manager here at Marketman, and I'll be guiding you through cost of goods and accounting webinar. So to start, we want to head over into your reports dropdown and into your cost of goods and gross profit. The cost of goods and gross profit report here is an extremely powerful report. We can filter this report based on months, weeks, or even the whole year specifically. But right now, I'm just going to look at the current. To make sure your report is set up correctly, we'll head over to the settings icon right here and pull up our categories. This will likely be set up by your customer success manager before logging in, but you can always edit these categories as you please. Typically, it's set up as food, beverage, and other for retail or miscellaneous. The categories on the left here are coming directly from Marketman. These are categories that you made in the system, while the categories on the right are coming directly from your point of sale system connection. To compare these two categories, we're just going to want to pull any of the categories from the left and the right into the middle. So for example, under food, I want to bring over my pizza, and under wine, I want to put that into my beverages. This will give you an overall cost of goods. When looking at this, you can see it's about 41% for my current month. Typically, we like to stay under the 30-35 range to, to ensure the best profits. And what this is simply comparing is all of your sales to all of your purchases. So it's extremely important that you're putting in all of your invoices and receiving all of your orders to ensure that this is a correct number. You can take a look here at your overall cost of goods by food, beverage, and if you have different categories here as well. When you click into one of these categories, you can see the breakdown of all of the smaller different categories within it. So for example, my meat compared to all of my food is 36.5%, where my produce is about 51%. And this is how your food categories stack up to your overall cost of goods. You can see a breakdown of each individual category in your spending and your COX percentage here as well. And if you continue to scroll down, it will show you individual items cost of goods as well. You can see here that you have an opening inventory count and a closing inventory count. Without an opening and closing inventory count, we're simply looking at an estimated cost of goods. So just sales and just purchases. When we filter with a time range that has an inventory count, these numbers will get more exact based on what we have on hand. If you click into one of these calculators here, it'll give you the breakdown of all of the numbers that are coming into play here. So of course, your opening inventory value, your average pricing, and your opening value, along with your purchases, when you purchase these items, and the document numbers of when the exact purchase was, with the dates and times as well. If you have a multi-location, you will have transfers appearing here. If you have a closing inventory account, that will also appear. And then overall, the numbers for your cost of goods report. Next thing I want to go over is the accounting setup. So if we go into our settings dropdown and click into company, we can see that there's an accounting section on the right-hand side here. For me, I have QuickBooks Online as my connected accounting, but to select an accounting, you can click through this drop down and pick any one of our accountings or generic if you are just doing your accounting on your own and connect to that accounting software and press save. The way we link our accounting software to Marketman is through expense accounts. We can set up expense accounts in three ways, either the supplier level, category level, or the individual item level but the default will always be on the supplier level. So let's click into suppliers and into your different suppliers. Once you click into your supplier specifically, you can scroll down to see the accounting section here. Based on the accounting software that you are connected to, you're going to wanna match up your expense account, credit account, class, and tax account exactly as you have them in your accounting software. If you are using a connected software, the information will auto-populate from your accounting software here. But it's extremely important that we have the default categories set up on your supplier level. 
we can also set this up on the category level to get a little more detailed. For example, I can set it up on my condiments level if this is specific depending on the products that we get. And then of course, again, on the inventory item level. The inventory item level will override the category level and the category will override the default level on the suppliers. But we always wanna make sure we have it set up on the supplier level first. The next thing I wanna go over is how to export your invoices into accounting. So if we click the accounting drop down and into your invoices, you can see a history of every invoice that you've had for any given period of time. Currently I'm looking at this month. I can filter by my different types of invoices, suppliers, statuses, and when they're due for payment as well. And over here on the right, I can see if the invoice has been synced with your accounting software yet. To sync with accounting, you'll we'll just check off the boxes here. You can check off multiple at a time and go to actions, export to QuickBooks Online, or export to whatever accounting software you have linked to your account. This will then turn into a yes. It's very important to see that this is turned into a yes to let you know that you've already pushed that to accounting and you won't be able to duplicate push it to accounting. Next thing I wanna cover is irregular prices. Irregular prices is a way that MarketMan updates your prices in the system. So for example, as my invoices come in and my prices fluctuate, there may be a difference from my last invoice to what my current pricing is. For example, my Jack Daniels here was $101.35, but it looks like on my most recent invoice, it dropped down to $95, which is a great savings of about 6%, 6.5% here. And I can see that there's an updated price. When a price is not updated, you will see the two options here, either update or reject. You, I would say you mostly update the price. Most of the time, I would say about 90% of the time, you're going to update the price. This is the understanding that the new price is what I'm going to be paying. So it was $36, it's now $42. I understand that that's the new price I've paid. So I can go ahead and just update that price and it will list that it was updated. This will then update the price in the system going forward. The only time you would reject the price is if it's a one-off situation with your supplier where they may have owed you or gave you a special discount, but it's not the typical price that is going to be moving forward. Once you update these irregular prices, you can see in your price change report under reports, how prices have fluctuated over time. So for example, I can see all of my different items that have been purchased in the last month and how the price has changed over time. A dollar here, a dollar there might not seem too much, but when you start to look at it over a period of time, you'll realize, wow, the price of my arugula has actually doubled since this time last year, which is pretty crazy. So this is some great information that you can bring to your supplier to try to work on lowering prices or maybe even think about switching to a different supplier with better, with better pricing. Last thing I wanna cover is of course our support team here. When you click this green question mark, you can always live chat with our support team or search our Zendesks for any articles or how to's. I'm now gonna open it up for any questions. Feel free to write them in the chat or uh, reach out to your customer success manager directly.